I'll see him on Wednesday, uh, which no crowd can really fill up. So it'll be interesting to see how they do with what looks like a very, very good and supportive crowd for senior night. And keep an eye on the bottom of your screen now. We'll have tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Harris Regional and Swain Community Hospitals. Again, you see Nicholas Robinson, who was just honored here on senior night at the Ramsey Center, and he's already making an impact in this game with his three-point shot to open up play tonight. He had a lower body injury that kept him out of the last two and a half games for Western Carolina. Missed the second half of the game that he was injured in a couple of weeks ago. And his absence has really been felt here by this WCU squad. We talked about his ability to score, but also rebound. He's a transfer from Valparaiso, who's been a solid SOCOM player all season long. And now a miss here on the first attempt by the key Dets. The follow attempt driving down the baseline is missed by Arnold, Connor Arnold on that attempt. But we will have a pushing foul on the Catamounts. Looks like Arnold just tried to penetrate, got a little bit more of the Catamount defense than he was expecting. The defense was set up, so it was interesting to see that called as a shooting foul and a block or a push. And Connor, Connor Arnold already at the free throw line here for the Key Dets. A couple of free throws on the way. The first one is up and good. And we'll be bringing you tonight's Penske Trucks keys to the game in just a moment. Let you know who what we feel will be the uh, – maybe the difference makers for each team as both free throws good here by the key Dets pulling the VMI squad back within one early on. Again, the keys to the game brought to you by Penske. Need a truck? Call Penske. And for the VMI key Dets, they need to keep doing what they do best. That's banging in three-pointers, Greg. They lead all of Division I basketball and three-pointers made this season. And they need to sweep this seasonal series. Western Carolina blew a 13-point lead in the second half, as you see freshman Marcus Banks from downtown. Got him out with a couple of threes here to open up. And now it's a four-point Western Carolina lead. But the Catamounts were unable to hold a big advantage in the second half on the road at Lexington in early February. So VMI hoping to uh, sweep this series with the Catamounts and again position themselves as far as seeding for the SOCON tournament. Catamounts with an empty possession, and here come the key debts down the floor now with a chance to cut into this four-point Catamount lead. Western Carolina, it looks like right now, is knowing that the key debts are going to hit three, so they're trying to get out ahead of that. As you've seen, VMI attempt a three-pointer each time down on offense, so is Western Carolina. That was Honor Huff on the miss. Now Banks again for a three, and this one off the mark, as you see, Kaufman chased down the loose ball. Let's talk about the keys to the game for the Catamounts. They're coming off an impressive win. We mentioned that over Mercer last Saturday. They have those wins over ETSU and Chattanooga at home in conference play this season. So they need to use this home court advantage as you see the rebound pulled down here by Nicholas Robinson. And we've talked about this also, Greg. If the Catamounts want to play that Cinderella role next week at the conference tournament, they need to start that momentum here tonight, and plays like that will definitely help, as you see Baycoat drive in for the kiss off the glass as Western Carolina now leads by six. But again, got to get this quality win against a very good VMI team to try to build some steam heading towards Asheville on Friday night. Well, Western Carolina has shown that they can hang with the best of the best in the conference and that the conference is wide open. So all they need is some uh, mojo, as we put earlier in the in the. Uh, Broadcast. They need some mojo going forward to get this win and to be successful going into the tournament so they can play spoiler. So Bay Coach shot is no good, altered a bit by some good defense there by the Key Dets. And now an inadvertent swap and the ball taken away by the Catamounts. Gilmore was the player who deflected the ball. And now on the transition basket, it's going to be Cam Baycoat and Western Carolina off to a very good start here on their home floor as the Catamount lead has grown up to eight points now. Bringing in Patrakis is going to bring some three-point game for Western Carolina. Big Coat, a 75% free throw shooter on the season, and this one just shy of the rim, and the rebound down by the Key Dets. Western Carolina opening up four of eight from the floor. As back down the court come the Key Dets, they are 0 of 4. The only points coming off a couple of free throws by Arnold. And now VMI working their half-court offense here. Good defensive pressure by the Catamounts to open up. Kerfman now over to the top of the key. Three-pointer on the way, and this one is good here by Tanner Manns. And we talked about VMI's prowess beyond the three-point line. They lead all of D1 in three-pointers made per game. And 
And here's a shot out of the corner. No good by Petrakis, the Kansas State transfer. Cadets now back on offense. Here's a three-point attempt on the way. And this one is good by Brennan Watkins. So just like that, and that's the danger of this VMI team. They were down by eight. They bang a couple of threes, and Greg, all of a sudden, it's just a two-point catamount advantage. Right. It's what happens when you trade three for two or you have empty possessions down on offense. But more importantly, those are the first two really clean three-point shots that VMI has got in this game. And here's a miss by Marcus Banks, his third three-point attempt early on. Cadets now back in possession. They have a chance to tie or take the lead here. Catamounts have led throughout. Western Carolina opened with a three-pointer by Nicholas Robinson, and they've been shooting the ball very well, but uh, have cooled off a bit here over the last couple of minutes. As now driving down to the baseline is Kerfman. He'll dish back up high. Thinking about the three-point shot was Bonham. Now driving down the lane, a little floater, and this one's going to be good by Watkins. So we've got a tie game, an 8 nothing run here by the key Dets as Western Carolina will head back down the court, bringing the ball down across the timeline, the point guard, Ontarius Woolbright. Their VMI used an effect in a three-way tie for fifth place. And now we go back to live action. Western Carolina has hit a scoring drought over the last three minutes of the game. Petrakis will try to end the drought. His shot, though, is no good, but a nice stick back here by Marcus Banks. And Western Carolina back up by two. You know, if you remember back to the very beginning of the season when Western Carolina was really trying to find its identity, rebounding was important. And then rebounding kind of slipped away as the outside game became more important. It's nice to see Western Carolina getting underneath to have that positive rebounding. Here's a long ranger from the corner by the Key Dets. That one is off the mark off the attempt by Manns. And now the Catamounts will try to extend a two-point advantage. Good crowd here on a Saturday evening in Cullowee. And... Woolbright's shot is no good in the paint. And the Key Dets down with a rebound. Early on, Western Carolina 41% from the floor. The Key Dets shooting 37%. Once the Key Dets got their three-point engine revved up. They've made it a close one here in the Ramsey Center over the first six-plus minutes of the game. Now a three-point attempt. This one's going to be off the mark. Off the attempt by Kerfman, and the Catamounts chase down the long rebound. Here's Woolbright now down low. We talked about Marlowe. He was our impact selection tonight, and you see his nice touch, that soft touch, Greg, down on the paint, and the Catamounts back up by four. And that all started with Woolbright pushing and drawing a second defender, then a quick dish underneath. Finished well by Western Carolina. Right now, VMI is just trying to use constant movement to get one open shooter, as you see right there. Wow, that was around the world. Yeah, that, the ball may have to have a timeout just to rest after spinning around the rim that, that much. As uh, The three-pointer attempt good here by Tanner Manns, and that pulls the key debts back within one. They are never, ever out of a game with that, their ability to can those threes. And as you saw right there, it took just motion in front. He stepped behind another player and was able to hit that three. Petrakis now up to Banks. He's not been shy from long range. His shot is no good. Able to chase the loose ball down is Nussbaum. Thought he might fall out of bounds, but able to keep his footing. And now the Kedats will throw the ball away. Let's see if there was a deflection. Now we're going to have a backcourt violation on the Kedats off that errant pass. And the ball will come back to the Catamounts. That's where that motion gets you, Jeff, is because if you're not anticipating which direction your uh, fellow player is going, you'll throw that pass and it'll just go wild and loose. We've seen that happen a lot for both teams throughout the season, but especially there as they're trying to get everything set up. And you see Jake Stevens, the top scorer for the Key Dets, over on the bench in that walking boot. He has the ankle injury. Talking to some of the VMI folks pregame, they hope to have him back for the conference tournament next weekend. He missed Wednesday night's game against Wofford. The injury occurred last weekend in a game against Chattanooga. And he is a huge part of the VMI offense and defense. And now here's Robinson in the paint, and the Catamounts go back up by three. But Nicholas Robinson, Greg, 
at times can just score at will. When he when he's on, he is definitely on. He heard you talking about huge parts of the offense and decided, hey, don't forget me. I know I was a little bit injured last time you guys broadcasted, but I can put up numbers too. Downtown shot here by Kerfman, and uh, boy, it looked like he was pushed. An 11 here in Cullowee. VMI, we mentioned, won the earlier contest this season, 76-69, and the Key Dets have actually won six of the last eight in this series. So they're looking to continue their recent success as driving down the paint. Now we're going to have a pushing foul, and that will send Cam Baycoat to the free throw line to shoot a pair. Have you ever been to their friendly confines in uh, Lexington, Jeff? Absolutely beautiful, beautiful campus and uh, beautiful basketball arena. And they have that um, artificial noisemaker that they allow with the rings of all the, the um, I don't know if it's alumni or just students and alumni, that can make quite an irritating sound right up against the bench um, for opposing players. So uh, there's no safe place to play in the Southern Conference if you're a visiting team. Back at the free throw line now will be Cam Baycoat as the next free throw is on the way and it's off the mark. So a 16-13 lead here for WCU. Kedat's working now in their offense. Greg talking about Cameron Hall. The home floor for VMI just recently celebrated its 40th anniversary and it's one of the toughest places to play in the conference. Down the floor, Gilmore and the breakaway layup is good. I mean, Western Carolina right now is very comfortable playing their game. VMI a little bit scattered, but that three-point power allows them to get back in the game quicker. They don't have to score as many times. Western Carolina now on a little bit of a spurt. We talked about them having a 13-point lead in the second half in the game up in Lexington earlier this season, and then Western Carolina's offense, Greg, just went, uh, went to sleep. VMI... Went on a chair to win that game, well, winning won. by seven down the floor now. Here's a breakaway layup, and this one is good by Honor Huff. Huff, a 5'10 junior out of Brooklyn. A couple of plays like that, Jeff, and additionally those three-pointers. If you start having unproductive offensive plays, it doesn't matter how hard you're playing, zero to three gets it there a lot quicker, than, but three to two also gets it there quicker. Marcus Banks now finds Baycoat. His floater down the lane is good as he kisses it off the glass. And Greg, uh, Western Carolina now having their way on that interior offense as they're working the ball to the uh, glass. Right now you see another steal here as Robinson goes, same thing. Use the glass, take the effective shot, get points. Do whatever you can to get points if you're Western Carolina. You don't have to pull up and take those threes. You know VMI is going to shoot them. What's weird is that you're actually seeing Western Carolina completely change its offensive dynamics from what was happening at the very beginning as Western Carolina came out taking about four or five straight three-point shots trying to jump out in front of VMI who they knew were going to be putting up three-pointers. Well, the key dads have five turnovers, and that's aided the Catamounts and a few of those breakaway layups. As we've seen uh, Baycoat and also Gilmore and Robinson benefit from some sloppy offense. They gave the ball back to the Catamounts, and now the Key Dets will go to their bench. Three reserves subbing in. And how much do you think the absence of Jake Robinson is contributing to the Catamounts' ability to work the ball down low and get points in the paint? Uh, you're talking about a guy that is traditionally a good defender and also a shot blocker. I mean, yeah, Jake Stevens' absence for VMI is extremely important for them uh, as it looks like we're going to get a, a redo on that inbounds play. Um, what you're seeing is a lot more substitution because they need a lot more motion because you don't have that single offensive player to draw in additional catamounts that gives you the open three-point shot. So now you have to do that a lot more with your motion. That's going to tire you out as an offense a lot quicker. After the inbounds play, the key Dets go back to work on offense. Here's Kerfman now. Up to the free throw line into the hands of Nussbaum. He's coming down the paint, and we're going to have an offensive foul. Nussbaum a little too strong there, a little uh, awkward coming down the lane, and the possession will come back to the Catamounts. Early on, let's check the scoring leaders for each team. Marcus Banks leading the way for the Catamounts with seven, and with six points is Robinson for VMI. Tanner Manns with six, and also uh, Brennan Watkins with five, the top scorers for each team. Western Carolina holding a seven-point lead. The Catamounts have led by as many as eight over the first 
11 plus minutes of tonight's game. Now here's Baycoat for three and it's good. Cam Baycoat from the top of the key and the Catamounts now with their biggest lead, the first double digit spread of the game. Western Carolina's offense is extremely crisp right now. Here's Kerfman trying to answer and his shot out of the corner, the coffin corner is good. As Camden Kerfman will make it another three pointer here for VMI and early on the key debts have knocked in four three pointers shooting 40% beyond the arc. Edets now in possession. Down by seven. They came back from an eight point deficit early on to tie the game. And this shot spins around the cylinder, pops out no good off the attempt by Bonham. And Western Carolina will reset their half court offense. Coming down the paint, here's Gilmore. Catamount say more of Gilmore as we see the slam. And that's a big time basket there. And that's why he's moved into the starting lineup, Greg, over the latter part of February. I mean, yeah, he's given that additional tool to Western Carolina to make the inside game a lot stronger, which also relieves the outside game. So having that, that ability to play on both ends really helps. Tyler Harris too, too long here for Western Carolina on that shot attempt. And we're going to have a question. They'll be the 10th seed regardless of the outcome of tonight's game. They'll open play Friday evening against a yet-to-be-determined opponent at 7.30 p.m. And VMI, that will still be decided after the outcome of tonight's game and all the other play around the league this weekend. And now we're going to have an out-of-bounds violation. Now we'll give the ball back to the Catamounts. So stepping out of bounds over in front of the WCU bench was Trey Bonham. And the inbounds play now from Madison Monroe. He just checked in during the timeout. Catamounts trying to extend a nine-point lead as Baycoat again drives down the paint. Works the ball up to Marvin Price at the top of the key, and his shot is good. And now Western Carolina starting to give BMI a little taste of their three-point medicine. Hey, well, gonna... Both teams right here, you can feel the emotion. We're less than a week away from that conference tournament play starting. You can feel how much it's lifted up both of these teams. The Southern Conference has five teams in the top 15 nationally in three-pointers made this season. Western Carolina number 12 in the country in three-pointers made. Here's a couple of attempts, and a stick back is no good by Connor Arnold. So Western Carolina now with their biggest lead of the first half at 12 points. They'll try to extend that here in front of the home crowd on a Saturday evening. Or as well, VMI calls it, four possessions. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have you along with us tonight. Jeff Bryson, Greg McClam, and our entire ESPN Plus crew here at the Ingalls Court at the Ramsey Center in Cullowee, North Carolina. Marvin Price again from downtown. And Western Carolina now heating up from long range. The Catamounts 5 of 13 now from beyond the arc. Western Carolina is shooting well over 50% and shooting above 30% from uh, with above 40%. I'm sorry, I'm bad at math, Jeffrey. Here's Baycoat now down the floor to Monroe, and he's going to be whistled for the charge. Madison Monroe will pick up that foul on the offensive end of the floor, and the ball will come back to the key debts now as we go under six minutes to play here in the first half, and it's been controlled by Western Carolina. Right now, the Catamounts shooting 58% from the floor. VMI 30%. And again, the problem for VMI, Greg, just trying to work in their half court offense. They've been turning the ball over at a pretty good rate here in the first half. Eight turnovers already for VMI. The Catamounts only three giveaways as we play again nearing the five minute mark of the first half. And Western Carolina's got 11 of their points off of those turnovers. Kedet's now back in possession. It's going to be Bonham. He thought about the three, but uh, the good defense there by Robinson made him rethink that. And now here's the three-point attempt. This one is off the mark by Bonham. And the Catamount rebound down by Baku. He'll lob down to Price for the bunny. And the Catamounts now with a 35-18 lead. And, Greg, what a run here by Western Carolina. Well, it's and it's not just a run offensively. If you notice, as soon as this uh, – a uh, shot comes up for VMI. What's happening is that Western Carolina's got three people around the basket. So if that doesn't become a long rebound, Western Carolina's going to get it. So not giving VMI those second chance opportunities on offense. Now the key Dutz down to the baseline. Little jumper is up and no good. 
And Petrakis with the rebound. And you're right, second and third chance opportunities here for VMI have been almost non existent in the first half. It, what amazes me is somehow VMI still leads but uh, leads on rebounds. The only thing I can think of those long rebound shots that go back out to them and that Western Carolina has been so effective on offense that VMI has got the inside game a little bit when Western shoots up threes like that. Marvin Price, the Price. Tell that they have been thinking about that, Jeffrey. Uh, tonight is, of course, senior night as Western Carolina celebrates uh, Nathan Robinson and also two senior managers, uh, Rob Kleins and Thomas Leffler. Additionally, they uh, made sure that they uh, they recognized their senior bookkeeper, Victoria Powell, who's finishing her fourth year working with game day operations. So Nicholas Robinson, the lone senior here for Western Carolina, as he uh, returned from an injury tonight. And again, VMI just struggling offensively. And Western Carolina going back to work trying to build on a 20-point lead. And if they could keep this up, you talk about having a little, as Greg has been saying, mojo to head towards Asheville. Baycoot too strong on that three-point attempt, and now a rare defensive rebound here by the Key Dets. Back down the floor, here's a three-pointer, and it's going to be good off the attempt by Cooper Sisko off the bench. Cooper Sisko coming in from Frisco, Texas, 6'5 freshman, and nothing but bottoms on that three-point attempt and that's much needed by VMI Greg they've gone into a long scoring drought we talked about the 11-0 run by the Catamounts over the last four minutes of the game I can tell you what Cisco right there was as smooth as Crisco with that shot here's Gilmore in the paint he's going to be pushed and Marlo Gilmore will head to the free throw line to shoot two this is probably the one place Western Carolina is not as effective as they want to be tonight where they are 0 for 3 from that charity stripe Gilmore has had his struggles this year at the free throw line, 43% on the season. And the first attempt is on the way and good. Now, those numbers have steadily improved as the season has progressed for Gilmore. I mean, that's kind of the story of Gilmore, isn't it? Yeah, Ste overall, his game, uh, his free throw shooting, you're right. Is, and as a result, his playing time and moving into that starting role as the Dodge City Community College transfer back at the free throw line. And this shot no good off the back of the iron, but the stick back is good. The put back a little soft touch there by Tyler Harris. That could not have worked out better for the Catamounts as Western Carolina able to pick up three points on that possession. The and really old-fashioned way, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, something you don't traditionally see. The made fr uh, first free throw attempt and then the follow in the lane after the miss, and now the Catamounts with another defensive board. Chance to extend a 20-point lead as we near the two-and-a-half-minute mark before halftime. And coming up at halftime, we'll bring you the Harrah's Cherokee Casino Resort halftime show. We'll take a look at all the numbers from the first half and kind of recap what happened here in Cullowee over the first 20 minutes of tonight's game. And we'll also set the stage for tonight's second half. So stay with us at the break. Here's Baycoat now with a three-point attempt. This one is no good off the si side of the iron, and the Kedets down with a rebound. VMI working back in their half-court offense. VMI only shooting 26.9% right now. Yeah, they're really struggling, and in the paint, here's a shot by Honor Huff. He's only 5'10", but he, uh, he did some nice work down low. Had to really work hard for that two-point basket, and the Catamounts now... We'll have possession back in an 18-point lead, a minute 45 to go in the first half. Huff also always dangerous. He might pickpocket whoever's got the ball. Cam Baycook, his shot is no good. And the Kedets now quickly back down the floor, almost threw it away, but able to corral the pass. VMI now, here's Kerfman over on the right side. Huff with a three-pointer, and now in his seventh season after coming over from the U.S. Naval Academy. And uh, Coach Earl was an outstanding player back in his day for Penn State, a former Nittany Lion. And now the Catamounts will have possession after the timeout by Coach Gray. A 15-point lead. Robinson in the paint. Shot is no good. Gilmore with the put back. And again, you can see Marlo Gilmore. What a force he can be, Greg. 
on the rebounding, on the altered shots, and also on the ability to score down low. And you want to talk about what Coach Justin Gray has done here at Western Carolina. That's the kind of player that he's brought in, kind of offense and defense he's established. It's going to be very, very yeoman-like, a lot of working hard, you know, down there doing the, the, the important specifics in order to really establish the game that you want to. VMI is, you know, really gone high for let's get the three-pointer, Let's establish that as who we are as, a, as a, a group. Western Carolina able to do it kind of all the way around. It's just not clicked for them here in that first year, and that's kind of what you would expect uh, with, a, with a rebuilding process as Western Carolina lost not only their coach but a lot of players in the preseason. Now VMI will be tagged with a personal foul. Last basket by VMI by Conway pulled the Cadets back within 15. Man's returning here for the final eight ticks on the clock for the key debts. See what Western Carolina will pull out of the playbook here to try to close out the first half. They lead by 15. Here's Robinson trying to work through traffic with a long range shot, no good. Petrakis with a rebound, and the clock is going to wind out. Ball handling, turnovers. Honor Huff could probably do with a couple more steals to make their night better. Leading the way in the first half, scoring-wise for VMI, Tanner Mans had seven, and Brennan Watkins with six for the Catamounts. Leading the way, Marvin Price with 11, and Baycote and Gilmore with nine each, and now VMI off to a good start here. Greg, they're going to score on the first possession of the second half and make it a 12-point game. Yep, go right down low, get points in the paint, something Western Carolina probably wasn't expecting based on VMI's game. Now working in the paint, here's Robinson. Shot is no good, but the putback is up and in. They're going to give that uh, to Gilmore on the uh, stick back. Gilmore using his height and his body presence there to make sure that he is felt, known, and effective. So Gilmore now, along with Price leading the way for the Catamount scoring-wise with 11 each. As the three-point attempt is no good, this one miss, misses the works by Cooper Sisko, but VMI keeps the possession alive, and another miss from long range here by Trey Bonham, and the three-point shots not falling like they typically do for the Kedets. And now the Catamounts from long range. Cam Bacon from way downtown, and the Catamounts now with their biggest lead, well, getting close to their biggest lead. That's an 18-point advantage. They led by as many as 20 in the first half. I can tell you right now, VMI also making sure they have somebody down in the paint to get some of those rebounds that Western Carolina pretty much owned in the first half. All right, here are the key debts now. Trying to climb back into this one, and that's the kind of offense they will need to do it as Camden Kerfman likes that corner shot. He drains it. Kerfman, the junior out of Maryland, North Bethesda. He was our impact selection tonight. And now Robinson from long range. The bank is open on a Saturday night at the Ramsey Center. What a dramatic shot there by Nicholas Robinson. Let's see if the Kedets can answer. They do on their end of the floor. And uh, VMI a little sloppy with their offense in that first half. I'm sure that's a point of contention that Coach Dan Earl discussed with his team back in the halftime locker room. Most definitely, you've got to make sure that your offense is firing to get out of the hole that they've created for themselves. Western Carolina, though, has also been far more effective from beyond three-point line at 42%, 8 of 19. Here's Gilmore again, and his dipsy do in the paint will build a catamount lead to another substantial amount. 17-point catamount lead right now as VMI goes to work offensively. Kedet's in danger of dropping two in a row to head towards tournament play. They've had a strong regular season, and now the three-pointer is good, and we're going to have a catamount foul. It looks like Marcus Banks with the contact. I tell you, Western Carolina has been very aggressive challenging those three-point shots whenever they could with some very close uh, contact. So seeing VMI go to the line is not surprising. It'll be interesting to see how much that affects how Western challenges the three-point shot. You see Trey Bonham ready to shoot this bonus free throw. Bonham out of Mobile, Alabama. Six-foot sophomore playing for the Key Dets. First free throw attempt is good, and that's the bonus free throw. So that completes the four-point play for VMI and pulls the Key Dets back within 13. Here come the Catamounts now. 
Working the ball across midcourt. And Baycoat's going to allow the Catamount offense to reset. Lob down low to Gilmore. Marlowe Gilmore just high-flying acrobatic dunks tonight. We saw that last week in the game against Mercer. And, Greg, he's back to life here. And he's got his fourth double-digit game in a row. I mean, that is also an example of what's going on with Western Carolina's entire offense. It allows them to be more comfortable playing with each other, playing the game that is basketball. And when Western Carolina is out there and able to have fun with their offense clicking like this, they can do a lot. Little forearm thrown here by Baycoat as he was trying to work down the paint. And they're going to tag him with an offensive foul, so get possession back to VMI. Madison Monroe is going to sub in, giving Nicholas Robinson a breather here as we hit, head towards that under-16 media timeout. So Robinson going to get a little extra rest. And now the Kidets trying to cut into a 15-point Catamount lead, working through traffic. But we're going to have a block here by the Catamounts off the shot attempt by Bonham. And now Marlowe Gilmore again feeding the basket. Western right. Carolina's lead up to 17, and Marlo Gilmore has become a human highlight reel here in the Ramsey Center. Here's a three-point shot by the Kedets off the mark. Tyler Harris down with a rebound. Over to Marvin Price. His three-point shot is no good, and the Kedets down with a rebound. And how that was not a travel, I'm not sure, but now the ball loose on the floor, picked up by the Kedets. In the lane, shot is up and good by Bonham, but uh, Tanner Manns got away with a carry of significant value as he went down the lane. I mean, he took off from East LaPorte and still managed to not get called for traveling. Back down the floor come the Catamounts. Up near the top of the key, Camp Baycoat. Lobbing on the baseline to Marvin Price. Price getting tied up defensively back to Baycoat and his long range jumper is good and Western Carolina continues to uh, shoot well offensively tonight. Catamounts at 55% and we'll check that scoring leader uh, for you. That's going to be Marlo Gilmore now for Western Carolina and here's the breakaway basket off the glass for the Kedats Kerfman on that shot. VMI right now seems to be defensively determined to take away the paint, but that's opened it up for Western Carolina to be taking more medium-range and long-range shots, and things are just hitting for Western like they have not all season. And let's check that. That was Tang on that last basket for the Key Dets, who just subbed in. Lewis Tang out of Taiwan, a 6'4 junior. And this is Baycoat now on a nice little drive down the paint, and the Catamounts back up by 18. Yeah, and they brought Tang in, I think, for, for rebounding and also to be a presence there in the paint. Now we're going to have a push down low, and that will bring us to a timeout here in Cullowee. The Western Carolina foul will send VMI to the two. He was fouled just before the timeout. Jeff Bryson, Greg McClam along with you here on this season finale for both teams, regular season finale, a tournament play still to come. We've talked about it next week over in Asheville at the Harris Cherokee Center in downtown Asheville. And the free throw is good here by Bonham. And now it's a 16-point game. As returning will be Honor Huff to the Kedets lineup. What a great name for a kid who plays at a military <laughs> institute. Honor, I like that. Kind of like duty and honor and that kind of thing. Over to the far right, here's a shot on the way by Tyler Harris off the mark. Down the floor, lead pass, and it's going to result in a basket here by Tanner Manns. Manns a sophomore out of Wichita with that basket. And it's a 14-point Catamount lead, and what's eerie about that, Greg, it's about the range the Catamounts led by up in Lexington with about this amount of time left. They led by 13, and then... Saw the Kedets come back for a single-digit uh, win on their home floor. So Western Carolina's got to be careful here as VMI starting to slowly claw back at that lead. This is also reminiscent of that little bit of a lull in Western Carolina offense from the first half where they just kind of everything dried up for a 8-0 run or something like that. 
Catamounts go back to work on the offensive end of the floor. Marvin Price, who has been one of the top scorers tonight for the Catamounts and limited playing time. He's just had some really good minutes out on the floor. Now that was not one of them as he uh, threw the ball and it hit the rim on the pass attempt. And back down the floor come the key debts working inside the lane. It's going to be Tang. His shot is no good, but the long rebound over to the corner, and it's going to stay on the VMI end of the court. As Huff now driving down the paint, I'm not sure, Greg, if he got pushed or if he just got uh, tangled up in his own feet as he tried to make a drive to the bucket. I honestly think he expected a Western Carolina defender to go with him and was hoping to body up, and when there was no body there, he just kind of did a, um, a good old-fashioned table slide, if you will. So Catamounts get the ball back, and you're not at that point yet, but for VMI, you're nearing the point where you cannot have empty possessions or any more careless turnovers like that. Right, but their, pro their uh, feeling is jumping up with every single Western Carolina empty possession that, okay, you know, Western Carolina needs to take some more time off the clock with their possessions, take better shots, uh, be more productive because they have everything in their corner. But VMI also is going to push, as you see right here, that mid-range to kind of reestablish the long-range shot. That was Watkins on that nice mid-range jumper from the baseline. And now we're down to a 12-point catamount lead. See Coach Earl shouting out instructions on the defensive end of the floor to his team. Now the Catamounts, Petrakis, he's been quiet tonight. His three-point shot is no good. And the key debts now with a chance to get this one down to single digits. If they could hit one of their patented three-pointers on this offensive possession. And here's the attempt on the way, and it's off the mark. Too strong as Tanner Mann's unable to connect on the shot attempt. And now the Catamounts will try to build on their lead. Robinson in the paint, and we're going to have an offensive stones throw away from where I sit over at the old Reed Gymnasium where the first three-pointer in collegiate basketball history was made. They put a new decal on the floor in a special ceremony earlier today that recognized where that historic shot was made, Greg. So uh, a lot of history in that first three-pointer ever, and it happened right here in Cullowee, North Carolina. It's, it's amazing that you've got two teams that shoot the three so well playing in what is actually the birthplace of the three in athletics. And that basketball, by the way, in case you were wondering, where is the ball that went in the hoop for the first three-pointer ever? It's in the Basketball Hall of Fame. So uh, along with a picture of that shot by Ronnie Carr, so if you're ever at the Basketball Hall of Fame, be sure to check out that, uh, that piece of memorabilia. As now back down the floor come the VMI Kidets. Down by 12, but again a chance to get it down to single digits as they have possession here. We are nearing the midway point of the second half. Three-pointer is up, and it's good. And we've got a nine-point game now after Camden Kerfman drains the three. And just like that, it's down to a nine-point catamount advantage, Greg. And VMI has really been chipping away here in the second half. Now driving down the lane, and a good answer here by Cam Baku. Justin Gray telling his team to go back to its offense, rely on that paint points. Now we're going to have a collision down near the baseline. It's going to result in a foul. It's going to go against Robinson of the Catamounts. And you can see that VMI has really played almost spotless Basket, uh, basketball here in the second half. No fouls have been whistled on VMI after halftime. The Catamounts already with their fifth team foul. And now the Kedets will visit the free throw line to shoot two shots. And the first attempt is up and no good by Honor Huff. And I understand if he misses both of these, Greg, the Fans in attendance here will get a free biscuit from a local uh, restaurant chain. Yes, they actually get a, a card. There are no biscuits in danger right now. It's just a card that can be redeemed. So let's see if uh, the fans will leave tonight with a free biscuit card. But Honor Huff says no, no, no as he makes the free throw. And it's a 10-point catamount advantage now. But again, VMI doing a good job staying within distance here. They yes, know they're very capable of uh, being able to close that quickly with those three-point shots. Right, and that's why Western has to continue to play its game. There we see something we have not seen a lot of tonight, Western Carolina with a turnover on their offensive possession. 
Yeah, that's going to be for Western Carolina, the seventh turnover of the evening. Nine for the Kedets. And now VMI again with a chance to get the Catamount lead down to single digits. Thinking about the three-point shot was Watkins and said he's going to turn and drive towards the basket. And we're going to have another foul here on WCU. And again, that discrepancy, six fouls whistled against the Catamounts, none yet in the second half on VMI. And Robinson's got fouls on like two of the last three VMI possessions, if I'm not wrong. Watkins at the free throw line. Shooting a pair, and the first free throw is no good off the front of the rim. And again, uh, the biscuit promotion in play. So fans getting loud here. Watkins on the season, 71%. And this one also good. So now the Catamount lead dwindles back down to nine points as VMI will sub in three fresh players before play resumes. Right now the Catamount shooting 52%, VMI 39%. The Kedats have hit 10 three-pointers in the game, a couple below their average. Western Carolina with nine three-pointers. Here's Cam Bako to Gilmore off the glass. That all started with uh, Gilmore setting up a screen, then a defensive player falling down. Gilmore going down the lane, doing an excellent shot getting that ball. And now a three-pointer miss by Conway. Here's Gilmore again. Let's see if they count it. Put it on the board and the foul on VMI. Marlo Gilmore again just attacking the rim, and he'll have a chance for a three-point play. It's amazing the speed with which Honor Huff plays. That that's like uh, that he has not gotten more fouls tonight because he has been a nuisance to Western Carolina. Marlo Gilmore at the free throw line, and what a game he is having tonight, Greg. He leads the Catamounts in scoring. 21 points on the evening, and now going for his 22nd point. This one is no good off the back of the iron. The ball's going to rebound long down on the baseline, but it's saved here by... VMI They're facing a 13-point hole as they head down the floor. Almost lost the handle, but uh, able to corral the basketball are the key debts. Still, they look a little out of sorts here in their half-court offense as driving down the floor over to the left wing. Yeah, the shot clock dwindling away now. Five on the shot clock, so uh, firing a three. It's going to be partially blocked. Off the attempt by Trey Bonham. And Western Carolina will have possession. And let's see what the call is. We're going to have a, a kickball. Kickball, and that will allow the Kedets to sub in as returning to the Kedets lineup is Manns. Subbing out for the breather will be Honor Huff. 8.48 to go in Cullowee. Jeff Bryce and Greg McClam. Delighted to have you along with us here as Western Carolina trying to pull off another win on their home floor. They played much better basketball in Cullowee than on the road this season. Here's Tyler Harris from the baseline. Shot is no good, but there's the man, Marlo Gilmore now with his 23rd point. And the Catamounts lead by 15. And now we'll have an offensive foul here on VMI. If a coach could bottle what happened to Marlo Gilmore, whether it's just confidence or whatever uh, has developed in that young man, Greg, over the last two and a half weeks of the season, if a coach could bottle that and give it to his other players, I'm sure you could uh, you could make a lot of money off that. I mean, yeah, follow him when he goes to the uh, uh, when he goes to the dining hall and see what he's eating. Uh, definitely <laughs> More getting Cheerios, a bowl of like a, yeah. a bowl of Wheaties in the morning is what they'd say back in the '80s. But no. Uh, he is definitely showing how a full court game can be effective with that jam. Marlo Gilmore again. Uh, does he hear us? <laughs> it's, he's making our job a lot easier as we talk about him and he performs some highlight reel material like that. Back down the floor come the key debts and the three pointer is good by Honor Huff. That'll stop the bleeding temporarily as the Catamounts now with this big lead. A not insurmountable. 14-point lead, not insurmountable, but again, we're getting to that point 
where the Cadets are going to have to start really clamping down defensively. It's got to start on the defensive end of the floor, which they just forced an empty possession by the Catamounts. Down the lane, and the shot off the glass is good off the soft touch by Bonham, and that'll make it a 12-point game. So you're right, certainly not insurmountable with the three-point capabilities and the slicing to the basket capabilities of this Cadets offense. But if Western Carolina runs its offense and defense like it has the majority of the night, they are completely in control of this game. All right, let's see if the Catamounts can answer as Marcus Marcus Banks now at the free throw line for the Catamounts, 84% on the season, and the first free throw attempt is no good. See the Catamounts wearing the black uniforms on their senior night. And the second free throw is up and good. So it's a 13-point advantage. Western Carolina led by 15 at the break. And we're going to have a bumping foul now on Marcus Banks. It's, it's gotten a little bit tighter with those whistles as we go, come down the line here in the second half. Um, maybe because there was a little bit too much bumping in that first half, VMI getting challenged on those three-pointers a lot more than you thought they would, um, putting some bodies on them for Western Carolina. Trey Bonham, 81% at the strike this season and the first attempt is good that'll keep the Kedets within 12 as Nicholas Robinson returning to the floor for the Catamounts he's showing no signs of any uh, hangover effect from that lower body injury that forced him out of competition for two and a half games but uh, Coach Gray giving him plenty of rest tonight we've noticed he spent a lot of time on the bench compared to uh, previous games so he is getting uh, an opportunity to uh, to rest his uh, body and try to fight off any fatigue after the missed action over the last two and a half weeks yeah definitely won't, don't want to re-aggravate that injury before we go into tournament uh, as you know the entire SOCON is preparing for that so the key debts good at the free throw line on both attempts they've made it an 11 point game and now the Catamounts are going to aid this Kedet comeback bid with a turnover near midcourt. And you, if you make a turnover, you don't want to do it right in front of your head coach. That's uh, kind of a cardinal cardinal rule. He also did a very good job of arguing that his team didn't turn it over. Back down the floor now, the Kedets, and the three-point attempt is no good by Cooper Sisko. Nicholas Robinson is down on the floor, but I believe we're going to have a catamount foul. Going to be on Robinson, I think, arm in arm uh, with, I think it was um, Tang, who's going to the line. And Tang on the season, a 64% free throw shooter. He only averages two points per game, a limited action this season. 6'4". As he stands at the free throw line, again out of Taiwan, and the free throw attempt is good, and that's a nice looking free throw uh, form. Robinson again will sub out here, Greg, as Marcus Banks will return. Banks and Robinson both playing right now with four personal fouls for the Catamount, so Robinson going to the bench with that fourth foul and Banks now having to be very careful in his time on the floor. You have to think that VMI is going to take that into account as they begin to try and press Western Carolina's defense even more. Marlo Gilmore up near the top of the key. Give way to Cam Baycoat. VMI trying to clog the lane and we're going to have a blocking foul on the key debts that will stop the clock with just over six minutes remaining in the game. That'll give Manns his first of the game, and that goes back to sort of the uh, the foul discrepancy that you've talked about with Western Carolina, Western Carolina having two players. At the line, Cam Baycoat. 75% free throw shooter, and the first attempt is up and good. Baycoat tonight. 
20 points now after that free throw. So along with Gilmore, they have been the offensive punch for Western Carolina and the second free throw good. So give Baycoat 21. And that's going to tie his career high. He had 21 earlier this season against East Tennessee State and now a turnover for VMI. And that will give the ball back to the Catamounts. Western Carolina up by 12. 6.04 to go in the game. Argument there, I guess, was that Trey Bonham, instead of just kind of planning and stepping, it was a stutter step that got him started. And now it's going to be Bonham, whistle for the foul, a reach in here. He's trying to uh, strip the ball away on the defensive work on the full court press, but instead it's going to come back to the Catamounts. Now, again, a little token press here by VMI, and the pass will come into Cam Baycook. He will avoid the trap momentarily. Tang trying to save the ball before it goes out of bounds at midcourt, but uh, fortunate for Western Carolina, Tang got tied up with the uh, basketball, and it touched the sideline, and it will belong to the Catamounts. Tang managed to hang there in midair long enough that I thought he was going to get it back inbounds, but he just didn't have enough oomph on it. Marcus Banks now into Bay Code, and Western Carolina is going to allow their offensive set to develop here as they're going to slow down the pace now. Baycoat working between the circles. Nearing five and a half to go in the game. Baycoat down to the baseline. Shot is up and no good. And Greg, that again, that did not develop very well offensively for Western Carolina. Here's a three-point shot on the way. It's no good. Long range by the key debts and the Catamounts down with a rebound. Yeah, I thought that was about to be disastrous for Western Carolina as it was a zero to three disadvantage on that, but um, Western Carolina comes away with the defensive rebound, able to reset their offense on this side. Marvin Price has had an outstanding game tonight for the Catamounts. He tried to set the screen there for Baycoat. Now over to Tyler Harris, who's been fairly quiet tonight for Western Carolina. He tried that three-point shot off the mark, and the key debts down with a rebound. Huff trying to work through traffic. Now back to Kaufman. His shot is no good. Excuse me, Kerfman off the shot attempt, and it's no good. And the Catamounts down with a rebound. 4.35 to go in the game. Western Carolina up by 12. Catamounts led by as many as 20 in the first half. Marvin Price in the paint. His shot no good off the front of the iron. Ball bounces around, comes into the hands of Robinson, and he loses it. Out of bounds on the baseline, it'll be VMI basketball. Actually, that was Gilmore, and that gives him the double-double. So good job tonight by Marlo Gilmore. See Coach Justin Gray trying to work out a win here on senior night in Cullowee. It's been a hard-fought game so far for both teams. Three-pointer by Huff is no good. And Gilmore down with a strong rebound. So he is attacking the glass along with his 25-point effort tonight. Cam Baycoat working the point guard duties. He's handled it for the most part tonight and now uncontested to the basket. And the Catamounts lead by 14, 345 showing on the clock. Well, VMI definitely had to respect Gilmore, respect him a little bit too much, leaving too many defenders waiting on him to get the ball from Baycoat. Baycoat was able to sneak in around the back end. VMI now careless with his pass. Find those seeding uh, brackets for the, both the men's and women's uh, tournaments on SoConHoops.com by checking in tomorrow evening. You have to wonder the freedom of knowing your seating, how much that has played into the Catamounts game tonight. Um, and the fact that they've played probably the freest I've seen them play in quite a while. Now a long pass to midcourt on the inbounds play after Western Carolina kind of contested that earlier inbounds play. And now a three-pointer good here by Camden Kerfman. And that will pull the key debts back with an 11. And that's going to probably be the key debts plan of attack here for the final 3.08 of the game on offense. Fire on all cylinders behind the three-point line. 
and try to step it up on the defensive end of the floor and start forcing some empty catamount possessions. Let's see if that plan works here. Robinson, he's going to dribble into trouble. It's tied up, and now we'll step back for the jumper, and it's good. A good step back two-pointer here by Nicholas Robinson, and the Catamounts lead by 13. What an answer there by Big Nick, as they call him around these parts. I mean, there was nowhere to go with the ball. He tried to get it an outlet two or three times, and he said, you know what, I'll just take the shot. Now a three-pointer out of the corner, good by the key death center before uh, the name change. But uh, back when Marshall and ETSU and Chattanooga used to own that town, would bring all those uh, Thundering Herd fans down from Huntington, West Virginia. But uh, let's go back to live action now. A lot to be decided still in this game. Two minutes to go. Can the Catamounts hang on here on their home floor as it's going to be Petrakis now over to Marcus Banks. Three-point shot is no good. And the long rebound chased down by VMI. Kidets on the attack. Three-pointer on the way. No good. And now we'll have a foul as the putback attempt by Bonham resulted in a foul on Western Carolina. I think that was going to go against Petrakis. But you think back just to conclude the thoughts about we're talking about Marshall, but uh, so many of those great Chattanooga teams Mac McCarthy, and then you had Les Robinson and his squad with uh, Greg Dennis and uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Robinson, all those just outstanding, Mr. Jennings, excuse me, of ETSU. Uh, just back in the day, Les Robinson really had it going there with a nice run for the Buccaneers. Keith Jennings and Greg Dennis, uh, those outstanding ETSU squads. And, and what a wonderful venue. You, the money and, con and concerns that Asheville and others have put into that arena to welcome the Southern Conference and make it a true home for three to four days um, for a lot of fans from different from around the conference. It's right in the center of the footprint, um, very close to Western Carolina, but also very close to the upstate schools. So no real true home advantage. It's down to an eight-point catamount lead. Western Carolina here just trying to evaporate that clock. Shot clock winding down, seven seconds. Here's Baycoat trying to the dagger three. His shot is no good, and Gilmore was trying to come down with a rebound. It's going to deflect out of bounds, and a lot of life left here, Greg, for this VMI team, only down by eight and still a minute 26 remaining, and when you're a three-point threat like VMI, that could be a lifetime. Yes, uh, the only thing you can tell for VMI that would be worrying me if I was them is that you can tell how much they've had to run around and that their legs are just not as strong as they were before. Now a costly offensive foul here for VMI at a very crucial time of the game. It's what you've been seeing for the last two minutes of gameplay. VMI cannot have empty possessions if they want to fight back into this. Now Western Carolina has to return to the groove that they had for so much of this game. As you see the inbounds, and probably going to see some fouling happen if not, um, I was about to say, if not outright good defense, uh, VMI definitely just kind of pushed down on the inbounds and got a little handsy in there, but it looks like it was all ball. And then the second time, as soon as a Western Carolina player was about to run away with it, just pop them and see if you can get Western Carolina to turn it over with no offensive production at the three at the free throw line. Well, it's going to be Tyler Harris to shoot one and one. That's the seventh team foul on VMI. And that's a press that Coach Earl has gone to here over the last 10 minutes or so of the game as he's trying to get his uh, rally going has started causing some issues for WCU as far as getting the ball inbounds and trying to advance it down the floor. See Coach Gray now. Working again for a home court victory as Tyler Harris stands at the free throw line and his first attempt is good. Tyler Harris tonight has been uh, very quiet offensively. That's only his third point of the game at the free throw line, a 73% free throw shooter this season. And now the second free throw is good. So big points for Tyler Harris, only his third and fourth points of the game as the BMI will head down the floor, again down by double digits now. Here's Kerfman over to the corner. Three-point shot is off the side of the backboard, and it's going to come down into the Catamounts' possession. 
55 seconds to go, and the Catamounts are going to break the press and kind of slow down the offense again. Let's see if VMI elects to foul. Or they're going to pull off the, uh, the defense here. We're going to have a foul. It's going to be on Tanner Manns, his second personal. Eighth team foul on the key debts, so Catamounts will head back to the free throw line. Western Carolina, Greg, looking for their fifth conference win of the season. They came in 4-13 and 13 overall, and if the Catamounts can hold on, it would be the 11th overall, <clears throat> 11th overall win of the season as the free throw is up and good. Western Carolina definitely moving in a positive direction over these last few games. Um, you know, trying to build a solid foundation here and a foundation that gets better as you go to the tournament. Because remember, the tournament is what's most important. Chattanooga, regular season champs, definitely go in kind of eyeing up everything. But as Western Carolina fans are aware, uh, just because you're the champions doesn't mean you're unbeatable. BMI again misses on the layup attempt. And the Catamounts down with a rebound. Petrakis had an open look to the basket. But right now, the Catamounts just trying to burn the clock as the pass will come over to Baycoat. And Petrakis now will fire back to Banks, and it looks like Coach Earl is going to call off the uh, Hounds here and just let the clock wind down, and it's going to be a big victory for Western Carolina tonight here on Senior Night in Cullowee. And you can hear the response from the crowd as Marlo Gilmore was the uh, top offensive star tonight, and he's out at midcourt right now just asking for more from the home floor. Here's the pass inbounds to Tang. And we're going to have a foul on Petrakis with three seconds left. Joe Petrakis was just trying to hold his arm straight in the air, Greg, and they're going to tag him for a foul. I, I can Maybe see, swallow the whistle there, huh? I, I, can, see, I can see that call being made um, unless maybe the referees are trying to give the Western Carolina fans a biscuit. <laughs> the only reason I can see to call that whistle. And don't forget, Greg McClam knows where those biscuit uh, coupons are handed out, so maybe Greg uh, had something to do with that. There's the. That's why I won't be on the post game. <laughs> the first free throw is good by Tang, and the second free throw is also up and good. So Tang thanks the ref for allowing him to pad his stat sheet, and that will do it here in Cullowee tonight.